as president, there have been a lot of times that people have sort of accused me of having sort of like a pet project. And whether that's air conditioning or EES or class size, okay? But I, I do want to share with you, there's always been something that has been my top priority. And that has been teacher pay. No, I just said that to get the applause. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, a, a teacher pay has always been important. And, and I want to share why. I think sometimes it's easy as a union president, people say, of course you're fighting for teacher pay. But I want to tell you it goes much deeper than that. So a couple years ago, I had the fortune uh, with the other state presidents, we were invited to see the education system in Finland. So the state presidents, we flew to Finland to see the schools. And we saw you know, many different kinds of schools. And we were going through one school. We walked around. And when we were done, I came out, and I was talking to the Colorado state president. And she said to me, Corey, what, what do you think? And I said to her, well, what do you think? <laughs> and she said the exact same thing I was thinking. It's just a school. Now, believe it or not, this really threw us for a loop. So flew back to Hawaii and actually had to fly a couple days later. I had to go back to D.C. A lot of mileage there. Um, and I'm sitting in a NEA board meeting. And I guess it might not have been a very exciting meeting. Maybe it was a truly a board meeting. Um, okay. And I was still struggling. You know, Finland is touted as this great education system across the entire world. And I didn't see anything. So what was it? And during the time, I hypothesized maybe it has nothing to do with education. At their schools, okay, in, in Finland, um, they have free health care, free preschool, free college. Maybe that was the secret of their success and not their schools. So I, thank goodness for Google. Okay? Right next to Finland is Sweden, the exact same social programs. And I wanted to see how did Sweden do. And this is what really surprised me. Sweden in student outcomes was close to what the United States was. And Finland was still at the top. So what was the big difference between Sweden and Finland? And Google had the answer for me. <laughs> the big difference was, and this is the basic debate that we're having in our own country right now. Sweden tried the Betsy DeVos model. What they tried was, is they gave everyone a voucher, and they wanted to be a survival of the fittest. They could choose whatever school you wanted. And what happened was, schools started to focus on testing and teaching to the test, and they started to lie about how well they were doing. Okay? And so even though they had all of the same social programs as Finland, they weren't doing as well. And then I thought about the key to Finland's success. Okay? It might have been just a school, but then I realized we went to a couple of schools, rich neighborhoods, poor neighborhoods, and one of the things I realized was this. You couldn't tell the difference. It may have been just a school, but the thing is they believed in equality for all of their schools. And then we had time to think some more and realize some of the real secrets. Only 10% of applicants get in, even in to their teaching programs. They have low class sizes. When it comes to special education, almost every single class is an inclusion class, and they have the two teachers in the classroom. In high school, 50% of their students are enrolled in CTE. And they have enough CTE teachers to do that. They have free preschool for everyone, although you don't have to actually start education until you're seven in Finland. So they let kids be kids. But if you think about it, low class sizes, abundant preschool and CTE, only 10% of their teachers get into the programs. How do they do that? Well, in Finland, teachers are paid like doctors and lawyers. And they're treated and respected as such. So Finland does not have a teacher shortage problem. Their retention rate is they only lose 1% to 2% of teachers every single year. And no matter where you go to 
and there are some very cold places in Finland, they all, every single school has good teachers. And so what I thought about just seeing is just a school, I have gone around to see many of your classrooms and we have many great teachers. The real trick is this, how do we make sure that every classroom has a great teacher? So, can this be done here in Hawaii? Some say, no, that's impossible. Except for we do that right now. One of the fundamental flaws in our system is the way we compensate teachers in Hawaii. Right now, on the mainland, teachers, the longer they teach, they have years of service. And every single year, they move up with years of service. We have steps. And so during our negotiations, oftentimes, we have to choose between across the board and steps. In our last contract, we had two across the board and two steps. In other states, they don't have to ever bargain the steps. They just do across the boards. If we were to do that after a few years, we would be caught up with the other, uh, other districts around the country with similar pay. We could do that if we just fixed that one problem. So that's something that we need to do. The other big problem we have the teacher shortage crisis is this. One third of our shortage is in one place, special education, okay? As a union and as a state, we have got to find a way to retain our special education teachers. And that's the special education teachers applauding, okay. Another problem that we have is our hardest staff. You know, if you look at it, the biggest vacancy we have are in certain areas. The Leeward Coast, Molokai, Lanai. Um, I know some of our teachers that came today had to travel for hours just to get to a plane to drive here. So thank you all for coming in here. Okay? There is a dream that we can fix. And that is, if we were to pay our teachers better, we could fix all of these problems. We could retain our teachers so they don't have to move to the mainland, don't need second jobs in order to be teachers. If we were to help our special education teachers, we wouldn't be losing them, or we funded our hardest staff, we wouldn't have to lose them as well. So when people say, how do you fix class size? Teacher pay. You want CTE teachers and preschool teachers? How do you fix that? Teacher pay. How do we make sure that we have equity in all of our schools, depending on, no matter where they're from the Leeward Coast or the Big Island? Teacher pay. And sometimes they try to shame us. All you care about is teacher pay. And the next time someone does that, you say, I absolutely care about teacher pay, and let me tell you why. Thank you.